Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over rock, paper, scissors. And I'm not going to give you any intuition behind what's going on in this game. I'm assuming you've played it many times in the past. If you haven't, I kind of feel sorry for you and I suggest that you go look onto Wikipedia. Nevertheless, this is the payoff matrix, so both, or, yeah, both players have rock, paper, and scissors as their strategies, and the payoffs are just as you might imagine for a game of rock, paper, scissors, so if they pick the same strategy, they draw and both get zero, and then paper beats rock, rock beats scissors, and scissors beats paper, the winner gets one, the loser gets negative one. So how do we go about solving for a Nash equilibrium in this sort of complicated game? There's a bit of a problem here, and that is, in fact, that this is a much more complicated game than those 2x2 two two games that we've pretty much looked at exclusively in the past when we were dealing with strategic form games. And the reason for that is because once you get outside of the realm of just 2x2 two two games, looking for equilibria in 3x3 three three games or even larger than that just becomes exceedingly tedious and time consuming and so we really just don't like to do it because it sucks so much. And in fact what I'm going to do here in this video is not actually show you that the equilibrium that I'm going to say is the unique equilibrium. I'm just going to verify that it is an equilibrium. And in fact though it is going to be the one and only equilibrium. The problem is showing that every other possible equilibrium isn't an equilibrium. So we're just going to focus on seeing that the equilibrium that I'm going to give you is in fact an equilibrium. To review, let's talk about what a Nash equilibrium is. A Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player has incentive to deviate given what the others are doing. I was very proud to find out just a few days ago that this is in fact the most highlighted phrase in my book, which means the readers of the book know what they're doing. They know that this definition is very important and they should be coming back to it. This is something that you should really uh, just focus on in your mind and have it memorized so you can go back to this definition without even having to look it up. Very important in, in game theory. So let's look at this game again. As you might imagine, the equilibrium is for both players to uniformly randomize among their three strategies. So rock, paper, scissors has a very similar structure to matching pennies, and we know that the, the equilibrium to matching pennies is for both players to mix with probably one half on heads and probably one half on tails. If you didn't know how to go about solving this thing on your own, you might just want to guess that the equilibrium is for players to, to play each of their or all of their strategies with probability one third. And in fact, you'll be right if you did guess that. So now I'm just going to verify that what I'm saying is in fact a, an equilibrium. So is this a, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium or is it not? Now the first step to verify this is to calculate each player's expected utility in, in this assumed equilibrium. And you'll notice here that each of these outcomes occurs with probability one ninth. So I've highlighted player one's expected utilities, and because each of these strategies is played with probability one third, each of the, these outcomes occurs in the outcome of the game with probability one ninth. So that's one third times one third, one third times one third, one third times one third, and so forth. And if you add all of these things up, well, what's player one's expected utility? If they reach this outcome, this outcome, or this outcome, he earns zero. If they reach this outcome, which they do with probability one ninth, player one earns one. In this outcome, which occurs with probability one ninth, player one earns negative one. So these two cancel each other out. And then this one and this one cancel each other out. And this one and this one cancel each other out. So player one's expected utility for this game is going to be zero, given the strategies that I've told you. I'm not going to show you that player two's is also zero, but you know, given the symmetry once again, you should be able to reason if you don't actually go around and, and check to make sure that this is true. But player two's expected utility is also going to be zero. All right, so how do we see whether player player one actually wants to change his or her strategy? How do we know that this is an equilibrium? Well, if we go back to that definition and we make a slight extension to it, all you really need to do is check to see whether there is a pure strategy that is a better response to what we are claiming is a Nash equilibrium. And note that if this is true, so if there is a pure strategy that is a better response than what we have is not a Nash equilibrium. It might be the case that a pure strategy is as good of a response, so playing that pure strategy will be uh, 
will we'll generate a payoff equal to what you're, you're going to get in your equilibrium, that's fine. We just need to make sure that there isn't something that gives you a greater value for either player. So going back to that game, remember that player one's expected utility is equal to zero if both of them are randomizing with probably one third on each of their strategies. So now we're gonna go through each of player one strategies. This is rock, this is paper, and this is scissors. And we're gonna make sure that player one would not want to change his strategy. Uh, essentially, we need to make sure that each of these pure strategies is not a better response to mixing with probably one third on each of those strategies. So if player one plays rock, with probability one third, he earns zero. With probability one third, he earns negative one. And with probability one third, he earns one. Again, this is equal to zero. So playing rock as a pure strategy is not a better response for player one. It's just as good. So there is no violation here. Now we move on to the next strategy. Paper, very similar. With probability one third, player one earns one. With probability zero, he earns sorry, with probability one third here and zero, and with probability one third here and negative one, that all cancels each other out. And again, we're left with an expected utility of zero, which means player one doesn't have a better response in paper. So he's still fine, and all we have to do is check the last strategy, scissors, and of course, this is gonna work as well. So one third times negative one, one third times one, one third times zero, add all those together, you get zero, and lo and behold, player one does not have a better response than what his 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 mixture was, which was to play each of these things with probability one third. And if you do the same thing that I just did for player two, you'll see that player two doesn't have any incentive to deviate. And so therefore, this is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, I just showed again that this is an equilibrium. It's not the only equilibrium. Although it is the only equilibrium, I just didn't give you the proof for it. So why didn't I give you the proof for it? Why didn't I go through every other possible strategy to make sure that this was the unique equilibrium to the game? And the reason for that is because, again, when you get outside of the context of just a two by two game, you have to consider a ton of different possible sets of strategies that could be in equilibrium. So we would have to check to see if any of these nine outcomes is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. That's not too time consuming. If you go back to the video on, what was the name of that game? Safety in Numbers, when we talked about best responses. Marking the best responses of this game is not that time consuming. You could do it in maybe just in a minute and you would see that there aren't any pure strategy Nash equilibria. But then you have to consider, well, is there an equilibrium where player one plays rock as a pure strategy and player two mixes between just rock and paper? Or does player one play rock and player two mixes uh, among all three of her strategies? Or does player one mix between rock and paper and player two mixes just between paper and scissors? Is that an equilibrium? Is it an equilibrium for player one to mix between rock or mix among rock, paper, and scissors and for player two to just play rock? You have to consider all of those combinations and there's a ton more than what I just said. And so that creates a problem. And, and that's why I don't wanna do it here. Now, the good news is that there are shortcuts for this, and I'm not gonna describe them in this video, but you'll notice that Rock, Paper, Scissors has this nice little quality in that it's a zero sum game, that if you add up all of the expected utilities in each of these boxes, they all sum to zero. So zero plus zero is zero, one plus negative one is zero, negative one plus one is zero, and so forth. They all add up to zero. And it's also a symmetric game because each of these players has the same strategies and the same payoffs according to the strategies that they play. And as long as games have that nice, neat form, there's actually a shortcut that I'll describe, not in this video, but in the next video, that will allow you to, to do a quick little shortcut and solve for uh, these games uh, more generally. Especially because it might be the case that instead of just ones and negative ones, you might have a little bit of a trip up here. So instead of just one, one here, we turned it to two and negative two. And suddenly that intuition that you had that you should just be randomizing among all three strategies with equal probability is going to be gone because there's this two here and that's gonna screw everything up. So what do you do in that case? And again, this trick with symmetric zero sum games will really help you out here. And I'll give that to you again in the next video, but for now, a nice little exercise for you to might be to try is to make sure that this is the unique mixed strategy, or sorry, the unique 
Nash equilibrium to this game, whether it's in pure strategies or Nash or pure strategies or mixed strategies. Apologies for fumbling those last few words there. All right, I am done for tonight. I wish you good luck in working on solving for any other Nash equilibrium in this game. Hint, there aren't any, and I will see you next time. Take care.